wir stehen hier vom Gartentag in Winterthur und ich treffe gleich die Band Noel Heap. Noel Heap gibt es schon seit 40 Jahren und wir werden gleich ein exklusives Interview mit ihm führen. Oh, how, um, yeah, what was, um, how you came in the band? How I came in the band? Oh, I was, uh, I was with a band called Sweet. The Sweet. Okay. And for a year or so, two years I was playing with them and I was in Australia. I got a phone call from Mick Box and he said that we're going to have people playing. So I learned all the songs while I was in Australia. Oh. I came back to London and then we got together and it all dropped very well. Okay, yes, Zoe? Well, Lee Kerslake was the, the, the drummer before, and yeah. through uh, health reasons, he wasn't able to continue touring as rigorous as the band was doing, so there was an audition going on, but I knew Trevor Boulder anyway, the bass player, gave me a ring, said, what am I up to? I'd like to go through the procedure of the audition, but I won a day over 240 drummers, and uh, here I am. <laughs> okay. And, um, yeah. What is, was it difficult to find new band members? Actually, uh, well, like, like I said, it was, uh, he didn't know already Trevor Bowler, so yes. there was a contact there. But normally, under normal circumstances, it's very, very difficult to find new like, yeah, replacement members. Must fit with the other. Always, always a problem, you know, and uh, I think we were just lucky in the timing, because it was very quick. We did the auditions one day, and Russ was there, there was many other jobs, and we decided straight away that that's the route we were going to take. It's all worked out very well and very quick. And then the next minute we were recording and then <laughs> off yeah. we went. Like with many bands, you can get someone in and they, they can be very good at what they do. You go on tour and then there's lots of problems, personal problems, and then you can't tour with them. So, you know, it's very difficult to get someone that the chemistry works with the playing, but also their personality fits in. So it's, it's, now it's the first uh, tour for you together? Uh, no, we don't. We've done about three or four, haven't we? Yeah, big ones. Yeah, we've done some tour. We've, we've already done, gone through the teeth and yeah. And survived. So and come out the other <laughs> side, all those smiling. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, so um, your new album, can you tell me something about it? Uh, what, what, what was the inspiration of... The 40 years anniversary, by yes. me. Well, because first of all, the, the, the 40 years was coming up. I mean, you had to do something. So we spoke with the band, <laughs> Dell. And they had some suggestions for choosing certain songs, and we had suggestions for choosing certain songs, so we put them all together. And it's very similar to what we always played live, and that's what we thought people would like, and it's been certainly very, very well. And with the DVD from uh, uh, Sweden Rock, the package of bonus, there's a bonus on the CD, and there's also just a CD. Shower is good. Not so good, but it's good. Shut up! Do you hear that noise out there? Hey, somebody wants to go to her dinner! Okay. Tell them to shut up. <laughs> yeah. You pick How long you worked on the album? Sorry? How long you worked on the album? How long does the it take? The present one. Yes. Oh, we're only in there. Barely two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually nine days we were recording. We were recording okay. for nine days. Then it was mixed later on. Yes. But the recording was nine days. Very quick. Never, yeah, made, yeah. never made it all that quick before, have we? Oh, yeah. Wait, Steve was close. Yeah. And normally, how long takes it to... Oh. Three weeks, four weeks, for us. Other people take longer because yeah. they either struggle with certain aspects of uh, the play within the band or the arrangements, or the producer's not happy with this, or the band member's not happy with that. Yeah. But, That's right. We, we're always, we always um, get to a routine stage, but we... You know, we work out the song before we go to the studio. So we're really happy with what we've got. We don't need to worry about wasting time. So the job gets done quicker. Okay, and so what's the difference between your old songs and your songs now? Is, is there a difference? They're older. <laughs> what's the difference? Fundamentally, there, there's, very, there's similarities. Yeah, the, uh, the guitar, the organ sounds, the harmony sounds, and the uh, style of lyrics. Oh, certainly not the same, but you have the, the very It's very heapy sounding, uh, otherwise we wouldn't be doing it because it just doesn't, it doesn't fit. A lot of new trends, I suppose, or styles don't really fit with what we do, and it will sound strange. So we've kept it in the, in the format that has always worked, and that's why I think that's the secret of the fact that we are still around today. That very <laughs> And you still like the old songs like uh, Lady in Black or 
we can't do it anymore. No, <laughs> go uh, We changed it about a bit. We changed the feel about a bit. So it makes it a bit fresher for us to play. But like anything, you've got to enjoy what you do if the fans like it, because without the fans we can't play. And so therefore we have to appreciate what's going on. And you learn to love to play rather than hate a, a song. <laughs> <laughs> you can hate the song, but, but the thing is whether you um, are playing every night to different people. Yeah. It's, the song is new. So, I mean, yes, if to listen to it at home, it's different. I mean, it's <laughs> boring. But as soon as you perform that song to a fresh, the old it becomes something new. Okay, so you have a favourite song? Or which one you like to play most in your life? Favourite? I haven't really got favourites, no. <laughs> I mean, I like the high energy, up tempo songs as well as some of the ballads. You know, it's nice to have the disciplines and the, uh, you know, the feel differences between different tracks, but um, I don't really have favourites, I just enjoy playing them. So, oh. And um, you think your audience changed during the last years? Not changed. There's more, more of them, and younger and younger. <laughs> Sometimes the festival can have three generations of fans. It's unbelievable. So there's. Yeah, we met a fan from the coffee. Oh right. right. So the good thing is because we had celebration just come out, but before was Wake the Sleeper. That was the first album for ten years. It's sort of everyone's gone. Oh, you're right. He would suddenly come back because of the, only because of the album and so therefore we've had more reviews in more magazines and newspapers and interviews yeah. discussing the new albums and recordings so it's made everybody more aware so the, the, the fan base is starting to get bigger and bigger because they like the album. Okay, um, so you have, um, have added ever worked with other bands together? Or with other artists? Yes, yeah. or yeah. for a song? Deep Purple, Blade, Got hard. Status quo of all people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody. First of all, you're always playing with big bands. It's good. You liked it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. As long as the stage is big enough. <laughs> okay. Um. So you have a crazy story about the journey or something? Funny story about the yes. tour. Yes. Oh, funny crazy. What did Rock say about that? <laughs> well, there's lots of funny little things. Well, actually, yeah, there, there was a there, We were on the bus the other night, doing an overnight, and uh, some of the members of the orchestra were already in bed to sleep, and some of the members of the orchestra were awake in the back of the bus, partying. <laughs> and um, one of the members of the orchestra woke up the tour manager like this and said, Quick, get out of bed, your girlfriend's waiting outside the bus. Oh, no. So he jumped down off his bed in his night shirt, ran out of the bus, because nobody was there. But by the time he came back, we got into a bus. But uh, that was naughty. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, yes, is there a question you would like to answer, but nobody ever asked? Yeah, that, that, unanswer that unanswerable question. Um, <laughs> what, what question would you like to be asked? To What's the question you'd like to be asked? Would we like to play loads of concerts, maybe 50 concerts, for a million euros a concert? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we are. We will. Yeah, okay. Um, so, um, Collaborations, actually. It's nice for us to get involved in some collaborations, maybe, you know, yeah. with other, uh, you know, the old with the new, like the brand new, the old with the new, so, that, so it makes music universal, <laughs> you, know, the, you know, music should be universal anyway, so it's nice to do, when the Bun DMC did a, a record with Aerosmith, so maybe you write heat with Lady Gaga, or, you know, it would be very interesting. Yes. Can you arrange it? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Next time you interview Lady Gaga, put the word in. Okay, I will do it. So, um, have you plans for the future? Plans for the future? Yes. Well, keep touring, making more music, and communicating with the people. So there's no end of playing music? No, 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 no. no end. So. Proper musicians don't end. Yes. And um, so, where are you um, playing the next time? Uh, I mean, Z7. Z7, in, in Plateau. Plateau. Where is it? Plateau. Ah, Plateau, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. the day after tomorrow. And oh. then it's
back to Deutschland. Yes. The fatherland. Uh, <laughs> is that where was it? 